But what can I say? I'm a basic bitch. Hello. This feels like a talk show. My armchair. Tell me about yourself. No. Hi. My name's Elizabeth. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I am dog sitting. Say hello. Aww. This is Ellie. She is afraid of the weather, and the weather is happening. <laughs> I wanted to film this video today and tell you about the books that I read this summer. I never film monthly wrap-ups because I feel like I don't read enough in a normal month. But now I'm looking back at the whole summer and this is a lot worse. This is kind of overwhelming. I think I have like 20 books. I don't really know, but don't worry. The title will tell you. I'm sorry. I'm being so rude right now looking at my phone, but I have a list. The first book that I read this summer was Miss Benson's Beetle by Rachel Joyce. This book had adventure, friendship, heartbreak, feminism, murder and more. It was such a fun read. The premise wasn't that exciting to me. It's about this woman who decides to travel across the world in search of a beetle that she's obsessed with. She's kind of a quirky gal. It's historical fiction and I was hesitant, but I literally read the first chapter and my jaw was on the floor. I was immediately hooked and it kept me engaged the whole way through. Next, I read Forever Interrupted by Taylor Jenkins Reid because Taylor Jenkins Reid is one of my favorite authors. Forever Interrupted was her first book and it was the only one of her books that I had yet to read. So I read it and I don't know how I felt. I think alone as a book, I thought it was fine. It was good, but it's probably my least favorite of Taylor Jenkins Reid. Basically this girl, I don't know her name, but she falls in love and gets married. It happens super fast. It's like this whirlwind romance. And then two weeks later, her husband, he's like riding his bike and he gets hit by a car and it kills him and she is is devastated, obviously. And then she has to go meet his mother who she's never met before because they got married so quickly. And the mother is hesitant and confused. And it's all about grief and heartbreak. And it's just like this really interesting relationship between this bereaved wife and mother-in-law. They kind of hate each other at first, but reach the conclusion that they both loved and lost the same person. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and talk I don't think I really read these in this order, but I did read all of Emily Henry's books. Obviously it was my first time reading Book Lovers because it just came out and then I decided to give these a reread because summer, love, why not? I already did a really extensive whole video dedicated to these books and to Emily Henry. You can check that out if you want. But overall, all you need to know is that I love these books and I love Emily Henry and Book Lovers is my new favorite. I think Emily Henry just writes really really fun, lovable romances. Obviously she's so popular and I think it's warranted. So yeah, my love for Emily Henry is real. The next book that I read was Northern Spy by Flynn Berry. This story takes place in Ireland at the height of conflict and it follows Tessa who is a mother and she works for the news and she finds out that her sister has just been arrested and is being accused of working for the IRA spy and she's completely shocked and everything that unfolds from there is absolutely crazy. This was a wild ride. It was a page turner, pretty easy read. I think I gave it like three stars. Three stars is kind of what I give most books across the board. Like it, it wasn't life changing, but it was a fun time and I loved it for what it was. Next up, I'll do these together. Sally Rooney. I read Beautiful World, Where Are You? And then I also read Normal People. I just love Sally Rooney. What can I say? I'm a basic bitch. I think her writing is just so beautiful and I feel like she has this ability to make you feel seen as a reader. I already talked about this a lot and I think this is like my favorite Rooney of all time. I'm obsessed. This is my second time reading it and I loved it. It was also my second time reading Normal People, which this is, I love that I'm showing it off and it literally Really doesn't have the dust jacket. I hate dust jackets, but you can believe me, take my word for it. I love normal people. People hate on it. If you don't know, normal people follows Connell and Marianne and their romance that starts in high school and goes throughout college and a little bit after, I think. But basically they do not have a healthy relationship and at different times, there are different like power struggles. Like in high school, Connell pretends in public that he doesn't know Marianne. And then in college, Marianne gets popular and Connell's not. It's like this weird dynamic, but despite their like issues and the toxicness of it, they are drawn to each other despite everything. And they always end up coming back to each other and I just love the way that Sally Rooney writes. Now I need to go reread Conversations with Friends. Next 
I read Just Kids, a memoir written by Patti Smith to slash about Robert or Maplethorpe, who was her best friend, at times her lover. He died of AIDS. It's just about their friendship, their relationship, how they created art together and for each other, and it's how they inspired each other. And it's like a love letter to him and to the work that they made together. It's beautiful, it's heartbreaking. It was a great read. Next, this is another one that I read in my screen time vlog. I talked about it in depth there, but this is another romance. I like to read a lot of romance in the summer, apparently. This is is a fake dating trope that follows two celebrities who are like these super famous public figures who because of that the public thinks that they are entitled to know everything about them so they pretend to date each other to sort of like appease their image at different times obviously they fall in love it was a fun time i really liked it i also pictured the boy love interest as like a harry styles-esque timothy chalamet kind of guy so that was fun for me i would recommend it a good like beach read i'd say and it also deals a little bit with pressures of being famous and also being a minority and so there are some like deeper themes there so it's not just romance i don't know why i feel like if a book is only romance and that's it then it's like not good maybe that's because i'm a hater i don't know i read a lot of romance and yet i'm like embarrassed i'm like don't worry like i promise it's not just romance it's like they are they're all just romances. Okay, so the next book I read, I listened to on audiobook, and that is Made, Hard Work, Low Pay, and A Mother's Will to Survive by Stephanie Land. I read this book because I am obsessed with the Netflix show that is an adaptation of this book. Same title, Made, starring Margaret Qualley. I would recommend watching the show. It's amazing. I'm obsessed. I've watched it twice. It's a dark show. I don't know why something about that show just like scratches an itch in my brain i can't explain it soundtrack the acting story beautiful i love it the book is also really good the book it's just her story of working as a maid for a living she's in an abusive relationship with the father of her young daughter and she's trying to support her daughter and basically making no money and struggling with a lot of like really real and really difficult subjects. It was a good book. I really liked it. I might like the show better. I don't know why. Maybe because I watched the show first, but I just love that show. Next, I have a copy of this, but I painted the cover. So I'm not gonna hold it up because you that's pointless, but it's My Placement by Beth Ann Roberts, which I did read only because Harry Styles is gonna be in the movie. And also my cover had a shirtless man on it and that was just, did not fly with me. So I painted over it like the absolute unhinged woman I am. Everything's for the aesthetic. I have really conflicted feelings about this book, but I'm very excited for the movie. I thought the book was really well written and it kept me hooked all the way through. It follows this like love triangle, I guess. Basically you have Marion and Tom are married. Tom is having an affair with Patrick. And it's set in like the 50s in England when being gay is considered a crime. So he has to keep it a secret. But the story is told through letters written from Marion, the wife, to Patrick, the lover. It's really cool. And then also Patrick, I guess, writes to Marianne or to Tom. It's really cool because it's all about this policeman, but you never get his point of view. I really liked it, I think, but also I hated the characters. Patrick, I love, he's a sweetheart, but Marianne, who's telling most of the story, I hated her, she was so annoying. And then Tom too, I just did not like their characters. So yeah, very conflicting feelings about it. If you've read that one, let me know. Okay, the next one is another audiobook. I listened to Pure Color by Sheila Heaty, which is like the most interesting book that I've ever read and I loved it. I gave it five stars. This book was like really weird and odd, but it was so beautifully written. It's like set in the early stages of creation and the main character gets trapped in a leaf. And that's kind of all that I can tell you aside from I loved it and you should read it. And it was really interesting. Like if that doesn't sound good to you, then you probably won't 
like it, but I loved it. Okay, next I listened to a mystery, All Her Little Secrets by Wanda M. Morris. <sighs> it was fine. I really want to love thrillers and mysteries, but I just don't like any of the ones that I read. I think there's something about it. They're predictable or just like unbelievable. I think I have a really hard time suspending my disbelief. And I also have a really hard time when books are not well written and a lot of times thriller books because they're so plot heavy they can get away with like a weaker writing style. So I just didn't really, I didn't really care for this book. I thought it was fine. I gave it two stars, two and a half stars. Like it was fine. It just didn't, it didn't wow me. I'm really, I'm on the hunt for thriller books that I like, but I'm just so hesitant to start them because I never like them. Okay. The Idiot Alif Bottomen. That's probably wrong, but this follows a freshman at Harvard in her first year set in 1995 and that's it. That's the whole plot. That's the whole premise. You basically just follow her whole year at school and I loved it. I'm all for no plot, just vibes. Like those are my favorite kinds of books. It was so well written and it made me think. Oh, and also she wants to be a writer. I feel like I'm not selling this, but it's so good. And I feel like this would be a really good time to read it because it's about school. So it could be a good little like back to school book. It's just, it was so funny. I was laughing out loud. I don't know, I think this book highlights how terrifying it is to grow up, but also how exciting it can be reckoning with that. So would recommend. Loved it. Five stars. Next, another thriller. We've got Leave the World Behind. Again, I was kind of disappointed. I was really hooked at the beginning. I was intrigued. There was like a lot of weird stuff that happened that I was like, wait, what? But then the ending just sort of left you hanging and you didn't really figure anything out. And I hated that. I was so mad. But basically this follows a family who goes on vacation, essentially rents out a house, like an Airbnb type thing for a week. And while they're there, there's like this big power outage in the city and they get a knock on the door and it's this couple who says, we live here like this is our house and the power was out we didn't know where else to go can we stay and so then it's this really like weird and kind of ominous dynamic between this couple who claims to live in this house and then this family who is supposed to be staying there for the week and like that premise i really liked and it really had like good spooky weird vibes um the ending just didn't do it for me just really had me kind of angry. Okay, next I've got four books that go together and that is Heartstopper, the graphic novel series. I read volumes one to four in one day and I vlogged the whole thing so you can watch if you want and hear my full thoughts on it there. But this is just a graphic novel series. It just follows two young teen boys who fall in love and navigate that in high school. It's so cute and sweet and heartwarming and I really loved it and gave them all five stars. Next, I have a one star romance, which was Dating Dr. Dill. I actually DNF'd it. I, I can't. It's like a fake dating trope. They both decide to pretend to get married. There was just one very specific thing about this book that I just can't really talk about, but it was really, it was like the last straw. Like he was the worst. He was so arrogant and controlling and annoying. And oh my gosh, I can't. It's just bad. I felt like a little bit scandalized and I just like couldn't handle it. It was a lot. I didn't like it and I did not like him. Okay. Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. Oh my gosh. I loved this book. It was so good. It is about two childhood best friends who bond over a love of video games. And then years later, they create video games together and become very successful. And it's not really, it's another book that I would say is very character driven. There is a plot, but it's not the strongest plot. It's really just more about these two characters and their relationship with each other. And I ate it up. I loved it so much. I gave it five stars. It was really good. It's hard for me to talk about my love for this book. It really um, broke my heart, but in the best way. I'm in love with Sadie and Sam and their friend Mark. 
marks and it's just all about friendship. It's all about being an artist and a creator and working on something that you care about more than yourself. It was so good. That's all I can say. And it's so well written and I want to go read this author's other books because I had never even heard of her before but this isn't her only book and now I need to read more. And like this is an instant new favorite and probably the best book that I read all summer. That might be a strong statement, but it was really, really good. And I would definitely recommend. And also like, it's about video games, but I am not a gamer. I don't care about video games and I loved this book. Like you don't have to have an interest or even a care about video games to care about this book. Read it. It was so good. Okay. Next up, funny you should ask, the little romance that is supposedly inspired by Chris Evans, which I was all here for, and also look at the cover. It's so cute. I was so excited for this book. <sighs> I DNS'd it. I think that my rating of romance books is really just dependent on what time of year I read them. I read Emily Henry in May, and I was loving it and eating it up, and then I read this like late July, and I was so over it. I think I'm just done with romance. I'm burned out. I don't care anymore. At this point, I'm like, okay, like we know what's gonna happen. And also, they're all the same. And this one really felt that way. It really, I was like, they're all the same. And I also just felt like it was sort of hard to get into. I don't know, like I just didn't really care about the main character that much. And it had these weird like blog posts in between that sort of took you out of it. And it's told in like a then now point of view. And I think that it's only done that way because alone the story is just boring. And so it was trying to add spice, but it really was just kind of unnecessary. Also I skimmed it at the end. I read like half of it and then I just kind of skimmed the rest. So I don't know if it got better, but a lot of people on TikTok loved this book, but I'm very weary of a lot of people on TikTok. So yeah, I gave it like two stars. It was, it was fine. So sorry. That same mindset kind of goes for every summer after. Harley Fortune. I was really excited for this book because Emily Henry said it was good. And it's like a friends to lovers set at the beach, childhood. Like I was getting Summer I Turned Pretty vibes. That's what I was like picking up from this or Also the cover is beautiful. Like I'm here for it and I wanted to love it. Trust me. I read this book in a day and I don't want to say that I hated it, but like the more that I think about it, I think I genuinely did not like this book. I will say there were moments like at the beginning, I was excited. I thought it was so cute. I honestly think maybe if I, I probably won't ever reread it, but if I had read it earlier in the summer, I might like it more and I might have been able to overlook the flaws. The flaws being a spoiler alert. So like fast forward a bit if you don't want to hear. She freaking sleeps with the brother? The brother? The asshole brother? Ew. No. Also weird. That's like incest. Also weird. Like no. And then you're just gonna forget her. Ugh, I just didn't really like the main character and I didn't really like the plot twist. It just it just put a bad taste in my mouth for the rest of the book, honestly. So that's that. Those are all of the physical books that I have. So now we've got to get to the ebooks, which actually I think I kind of read a lot of ebooks because I got a Kindle for my birthday. So I'm kind of an ebook girly now. I'm glad my mom died. <laughs> I said that so happily by Jeanette McCurdy. That's the title of the book, not me saying that. This is Jeanette McCurdy's memoir that she wrote about the relationship with her abusive mother and her eating disorder that her mother encouraged her to have. Horrible read the audiobook, listened to the audiobook, which I would recommend because she reads it. Although, okay, this is what I have to say. If anyone has read, the, listened to the audiobook, she does this thing that I thought was so, such an interesting artistic choice where like a few times when there was a male character, she would do a voice. But like, I don't think she did it for every single male character. It was just a few of them and it was like random and it was like not a good voice. And I was kind of like, wait, what? But it's still a five star read. I really liked it. Okay, next. I read seven books in seven days for some reason, for some weird reason I did that. Zen and the Art of Writing by Ray Bradbury. Wouldn't recommend it. It was a weird ass book. I thought it was going to be some writing tips. It was not that. It was Ray Bradbury bragging about his great writing stories. That was a weird one. The Book Collectors. This is about a secret library that was created by Syrian rebels in the middle of war. In 
the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado. This was a really good book. This is her memoir about an abusive relationship. Super well written, very lyrical and just like so interesting and such a good story. I'm going through these fast because I already did a whole video where I like talked about them more in depth. So if you're interested, check that one out. Happy Hour by Marlo Granados which is another vibey, no plot, just vibes book. And I was here for it. I think that's just like where I am at this stage in my life right now. I just really love books about young 20 somethings figuring their lives out, probably not making great decisions, but trucking along. Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata with Jenny Tapley translated. This was a very weird book about a woman who works in a convenience store for like 18 years and continues to do that despite, you know, society's judgment of her career choice. It was interesting. I liked the commentary on challenging societal norms. I didn't, I don't know if this book was for me. It was weird. I was interested though, like it was a good read, but a weird book. I think I gave it like three stars. It was fine. Next, we have another romance that I actually did like. Okay, so maybe my theory about the time is being debunked because I read this like a week ago, fully in August, and I really liked it. It was a fun time. I Kissed Shara Wheeler by Casey McQuiston, whom I love. She also wrote Red, White, and World Blue, so maybe I was a little bit biased because I was like excited and wanted to like it. It's just about a senior Chloe who the night of prom kisses this girl, Shara Wheeler, and then she disappears and leaves clues for her neighbors and friends to find. I really liked it. Just a good time. My camera died, but I literally had one book left, so we're just gonna finish this on my phone. The last book that I read was Everyone in This Room Will Someday Be Dead. I don't remember the author, and it's on my phone. Basically, this follows a gay atheist woman who has really bad anxiety and depression, so she goes to a church because the doctor recommends her therapy, and when she walks into the church, the priest thinks that she's there for a job application. So she gets a job in the Catholic church. And that's really the whole premise. It's hilarious, but also like kind of dark. So like dark comedy, which is really up my alley. And I really liked it. Those are all of the books that I read this summer. It was a pretty successful reading season, I'd say. I am sad to see summer go, but I'm very excited for fall and I'm very excited for spooky reads. Even though I literally just said that I don't like thrillers, comment below good thrillers. I want good spooky books for spooky season. But I think that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you feel so inclined. Say goodbye.